Hi everybody. Um, a warm welcome to everybody. This is um, the entertainment segment with Business Day. I'm your host, Anthony Ruduba, and it's nice to be here. I'm here with um, the yeah. one and only Dan DZ. Let me, let me wear my glasses. Please do wear your glasses. I'll just <laughs> be prepared for the location. Probably. Yeah, we're here with Dan DZ. Um, yeah. This is the, one of the best freestylers in Nigeria right now. We, we, we're so honored to have you in the show. Yeah? Thank you. Yeah, so how have you been? How is everything? I've been I've been good, I've been fantastic, I've been amazing. Yeah, definitely. Um, as one of the um top um freestylers in Nigeria, just tell us um how did it all start for you and you know getting into the music industry and how is it like with Jazzy Freestyler? Mm -hmm. So basically I've just been it's just been a gift, you know. I've just always had the ability to put words together since I was a child, you know. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really learn how to rap anyway. I didn't really, I won't say, I won't come and tell you I listen to a lot of hip hop music or something. I just always had the ability to do this thing. I just know that uh, since I knew myself as a, as a teenager, I could do this. And gradually I started to gain attention in my area, my community, I started building an audience till I went viral on social media. And here I am today. I'm mm -hmm. in the music business too. So I do music too. I have a couple of songs that are crazy too. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. I so mean, you, you spoke about like going viral. Um, how does that affect you as an uh, as an artist? You know, we we cannot people can put out music and it all goes viral. How do how did it you know affect you as in when it comes to like your music and how you started with the viral you know going viral for an artist? How how did it work out for it's you? It's crazy going viral. is crazy because Nigerians think going viral because to you have money now. Huh? So you start getting this celebrity treatment without the actual funds to back it up. <laughs> <laughs> People start to ask you, you know, and you start to ask me for money and stuff like that. And you know, it, it's left to you to convert that virality into business. And oftentimes it's not easy. And you know, freestyle is something that prior to me, I don't think anybody has ever done it on a large scale as I have done it on and as quickly as I ever did it. So people don't know what to do with me basically. You just look at me like oh my god, this guy is just amazing. Okay, he's amazing. What do you how much can you give him to come and do this amazing thing for you? Like, they, they are used to paying regular artists, they are used to paying DJs, to, like, but yeah. to like pay someone to freestyle, like, they're always double thinking, like, always double checking, and like, are you? but like, every time I go to the shows and I see the artists that they pay higher money, like, I kill the shows and I'm like, you could have paid me that money, and I <laughs> stayed. Cause like, it's not for me, performances are one of my biggest strengths because I don't even need. A song like I could go like 30 minutes one hour, mm -hmm. and it's going to be fantastic for the audience, for me, for the event planners, for everybody. But you know, I can't be explaining this thing to everybody one by one, so I, I'm I'm still trying to. I, I just dropped an album recently, I'm still trying to make the music connect to the audience, and you know, I'm trying to make everything come together. I'm still going to be this freestyle guy, but I'm still going to be an amazing artist because. I've had a song go viral before in the southern part of Nigeria yeah. too. I had a song go viral in Port Harcourt, Delta, Enugu, Abia. Like who, I, I did a song that went viral and it did good numbers. And you know, since it's not a national hit yet, so yeah. people think that okay, this guy is just a freestyle guy. Yeah, but I think you you have a you have a very strong fan base with um people um you know in schools on the street. Universities, yeah, I have, I have yeah. a strong fan base between the young and the old, even in the, in the armed forces. Yes, yeah. like the police people. They stopped me as I was coming here and they were taking selfies. They stopped me when I'm going to the airport. They stopped me when I'm trying to get my visa done. They say, ah, that is you, you know, if you go, you know rap for us. <laughs> so any checkpoint I'm at, army checkpoints, police checkpoints, ah, this guy really rap. You will rap for me. That I was, was in the boat one time and the man's wife just, the man just, video called his wife. He, he just parked. I told him something was wrong because I know where I was going to. Oh, he yeah. parked and he video called his wife and say, oh, this is that guy that we used to watch. And he was like, I'm like, you guys should calm down. So the fame is crazy. I'm not even going to lie. The fame, the, the way people recognize you and appreciate you is crazy. Yeah. But you know, being popular can be a disruptive life. Yeah. You know, if there's no money to back it up. Yeah. That the freestyle, I just want to give him joy. If you say Nabani now, for just not come small, so that Nabele she go carry, I go give him boy. Ah, this place that joy, I they give them. Reverse of joy, see the joy, I they give them. When I suppose John, they offer me drinks and women. It hard to see somebody with bad like me, man. Guy. Um, talk about you as um, a street artist and the new message you are trying to pass across. What, what is the what is that your what is that message you, you, you tell? That story. You tell oh, the story. The story I'm telling is as a Nigerian, let nothing stop you. Like like just keep going. Like for me, I've had I've had like thousand and one reasons to quit. You know, I've not had it easy. It's not. I I make everything look easy because mm. I'm just a very laid back guy. I don't I don't like to worry about a lot of things. But like 
I just feel like you just need to keep going because yeah. the person that stops trying, the person that is dead, you know, as long mm-hmm. as you're alive, you know, you just just have to do what you have to do. And I love doing music. And so if my music has been paying the bills, shall if it's paying the bills, or it's, it has been paying the bills so far, and we're trying to get it to pay more bills, you know. Yeah, let's talk about like um, AI and music. That, that's like the latest trend now in mm-hmm. the music industry. Mm-hmm. So like, what, how would you like um, in your in your music of experience? Have you have you tried to use AI to um, you know, in your creation of your music? I, you know, AI to I've not used AI to do anything. I've, I've not used AI to do anything at all. I've not tried to use AI because okay. I'm I'm not a big fan of computerizing a lot of things. Mm-hmm. So I've computerized things in the past, and sometimes com- computerizing things just makes it lose like the soul and the connection because you know me going to the streets here yeah, did something for me just lets me connect with people on a different level mm-hmm. that you know like there's a way people look at me when they see me i feel it i feel i feel like they, they feel like they have a connection to me there's a way people you know appreciate me there's a different i've seen people who go crazy for celebrities like oh but there's a way people look at me like there's a way when you connect to them on the grassroots level like on the lowest level, yeah. like in their comfort zone, there's a way. So that I feel like when AI comes into music, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say it's not going to be big. It could be big because it's the fu- we are getting into the future. Yeah. But there's a certain connection that people have with the, the artists that they love. Like there's a way Rema fans love Rema, yeah. not just the music. They love Rema. They love a lot of things about him, and they connect to him on a special level that I don't think AI, AI can ever can ever get to. But it can make great music. It can become. But if we lose. Because some music is something that connects to the soul, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Music is something that affects your mood. And when you listen to the music, you think about the person that made the music, you think about your own life, you look at the person's journey, you look at your own life. If AI want to sing about suffer, if I slap AI, <laughs> AI won't go to sing about I came up from the God. Like if AI want to do I came from the God, like which God that AI you would have put for inside computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, you know, there's some kind of music that you want to listen to at some point in time and it's not just because you want to listen to music. It's because of the artist's journey and the point where you're in in your life at the moment. And you want to be like, let me listen to this music. And, you know, it's speaking to me. So let's talk about like rap music here in Nigeria. So where do you see, the, um, where do you place rap music in terms of its contemporaries, like um, the normal Afro beat? Yeah. Like, where we have yeah this question you always used to ask. Yeah. <laughs> Afro beat is big. Like Afro beat is, Afro beat is big. It's been, it's been like for us, rap, for us, let's be honest, rap music is not like something that Nigerians, like, it's not something that Nigerians created. So, like, it's something that we adop- adopted, like, we collected it from other people and we started doing it. And it's amazing. We have our own African style of rap, but Afrobeat was created here. Like, it's, it's just like, begin with the adopt and begin with them born. Yeah. You know, how they, you know yeah. whether you like them or not, yeah. like, the one way you born by yourself, even if some people try so hard to, like, make it look like, oh, they are both equal, but like, if you tell, if you later tell the beginning, say, I'm going to adopt you, the beginning will even feel some type of way, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like, Afrobeat is ours. It's always going to be bigger. Yeah. It's not, it's always going to be bigger. Not to say that we don't have some of the biggest, art. like, even before now, we had, we've had, like, some of the biggest, our biggest artists before were rappers. MI, Ice Prince has opened was biggest artist in Nigeria, you know, even in Africa, because he was winning the BET, MI won the BET. I mean, even in Africa, how many singers have won the BET? I was not a lot. Yeah. But, like, you know, we have big rappers that are famous and have made it. We have Casper Uvis that have made it. We have Nasty C that has made it. We have, as well as Black just made it. Out, you know, Bloody Go made it too. So people blow up. If you have good music, you blow up. It doesn't matter if it's rap or if it's singing. But Afrobeat is a bigger genre at the moment. But if you have good music, you'll blow up. Let's go buy your song of press. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I was listening to that like over the weekend. Like, and I, if you sound, you, you both sound alike. What, what's, what's the thing with I'm not going to say we sound alike. I'm just saying it's just because, you know, I'm from Port Harcourt. Yeah. And the most interesting thing, I think the most interesting thing about Nigerian rap right now is the slangs from Port Harcourt. Yeah. And a lot of people are adapting slang from Potakot. So if you adopt the slang from Potakot, you, you think that we all sound like you, because people don't understand the slang from Potakot. If you hear someone that is not from Potakot saying our slang, you will know that this person is not from Potakot because sometimes they use it wrong, they use it in the wrong context, they use the wrong context when they are trying to make sentences. So if a Potakot boy listens to me and listens to anybody, they will know that I've been sounding like this for the longest. I've, I've made a hit in Potakot in South with this Potakot lingua. So like it's how we sound. It's other people adopting our sound. I'm not, I'm not trying to name, but like it's us, Potako boys. We are the ones that say our Bobby. 
We are the mm-hmm. one that says we that we are the ones that say put down for your body. We are the ones that says so many things that a lot of if you listen to a lot of even some of Zlatan songs, a lot of new music, you listen to other Jerick, even Jerry G's song Selena tested in my line in, in my song. Mm-hmm. Selena is a potato lingua for like jazz, you know. So it's mm-hmm. like it's our pH wow. is pH has like a lingua that is big in the music industry now because of mostly Ajibos last blow puts it, Ajibos last their pH boys who you know, they've been in PH for a long time doing stuff with Bonner before Bonner blew up, you know, yeah. in Botakota and came to Lagos. So, like, the lingua has been there. Yeah. It's been there forever. People just started discovering it recently because, you know, it's going viral now, it's going crazy now. So, anybody that takes it up, you think that, oh, yes, I like, but the most is a, is a bigger rapper now, and they say, like, oh, that is even like this. But they sound like this for the long. Even if you go watch all my freestyle videos, I use, yeah. I use speaking to work. Yeah. That's how I sound. Sure. So, like, now I have to be asking questions like this, you know, <laughs> but it is what it is. Yeah. So. so let's talk about like um your um let's talk about your idea about Afrobeats and Afrobeats artists in general. How mm. do we get you know we are, we are global mm. people know, but how do we penetrate more into the global market? What do you think is missing? That uh, uh, what is missing is we we need to re educate our Nigerian audience and we need to stop undermining our Nigerian audience because. I feel like a lot of people are tapping into this international shift now and it's just going crazy for them. But at the end of the day, like, it's just like, it's just like, they are tribal too, you know. Yeah. They are very tribal. Like, they don't make it obvious, but it's, it's everywhere. Tribalism is everywhere. And it's not even just tribalism. They're just always going to pick themselves over you. Like, you know, if you want to, if they want to give you billboard awards and it's all, and it's maybe, all American judges or panelists that want mm. to consider the songs, like, you're always going to just fall into one African category randomly or something, because, mm-hmm. like, they don't see the need, you know. So, like, we need to come back home and just look at what we've built and how far we've come mm. and start appreciating the Nigerian audience, start giving them proper shows. Mm. We need to find, like, I think we can never get appreciated for, you know, we've done so much mm-hmm. as, as a genre, Afrobeat has done so much. But the reason why it's looking like everything is dim right now is because the things that we're doing are not reflecting in our country. Mm-hmm. It needs to reflect in our country mm-hmm. because if it's reflecting mm-hmm. in other people's country, it's going to be like a drop of water in an ocean. They have so much. They have global superstars. They have Beyonce. They have Drake. America has too much. Remas can now blow up everywhere, but like it blow up in America, it blow up in, in, in India, but like they have superstars there. So if your song stops being hot, like they'll move on to their superstars there. Mm-hmm. So you have to fall back to your fans that Africans and Nigerians mm. and continue to engage them because you cannot be hoping that if you are dropping song, oh, I'm hoping that my song will be like an American hit before you, you know, you need to continue to appreciate the Nigerian audience, continue to appreciate the Nigerian. Because like, if you are disrespecting the culture that you are using to do stuff globally, like, they won't take it seriously. They, yeah. they can't take it seriously. They, we need to come back and look at ourselves and be like, okay, now we need to have proper conversations. How can we have like a venue that can contain twelve thousand people that we can have a proper shoot? A lot. It's just a lot of things. Nigeria just needs to be better. Nigerians just need to be better. Our leaders too needs to be better. Like it's a lot of things, yeah. but we're going to get there hopefully. Yeah. So, friend, just tell us what are the news? Um, the news over here. You know, if, I don't know if I should say here, but <laughs> nah, yeah, I, I, I want to be the one to say. All yeah, that definitely. Word, so that's it's inside just, Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, there's a lot of work going on yeah. behind the scene for new music. There's a lot of work okay. going on. I'm working so hard to, mm. because like the weight on my shoulders is much. But like, I'm I'm working to meet up to the expectations of the fans because yeah. like people, people expect so much from me. Yeah. I'm not even gonna lie. And one of the biggest problems for talented people is that people don't try to help. People just feel like you're talented and they just leave you. Mm. Like, because it's talented, they expect you to just work. The business is way more than that. It's way more than being talented. It's people supporting you. People need to support. People need to actually take it upon themselves to be like, if you see someone that's, apart from me, if you see someone that's talented, if you see someone that you really like their music, don't wait for Edon Jassy to post them before you start putting them on your playlist. You don't have to wait for a Weezy to post them on their story for you. I know that that can change their life or make give them more audience, but like, how many people can Weezy post on a story in a year to give mm-hmm. that kind of audience? Like, if you discover new music that you like, be a fan, support the person, see the person like a superstar that you just think that they should be, like, you know, so that they can be able to grow because... It, regular people cannot sound all of us, mm-hmm. you know. 
all of us cannot have the biggest budget to do the biggest things. So support can, you know, go a long way to keep us, sustain us till like we get the budget and we get the big funding, we get the big kids that we need. Mm. You know, support can mean a lot. Support yeah. does not necessarily mean coming to my house to come and say I'm your fan. Like in your own way, listen to the music, share the music, introduce your friends to the music, share the post, follow the artists up, follow their journey. Some people have been following me for the past six years. I have fans that are still following me till now. For that, been following me since I was 15, 16. I have people that come all the if I have a show in Lagos, people travel all the way from different states to come to my sometimes when I do shows, because I don't take myself I feel like I don't take myself seriously enough, you know, because <laughs> when I do shows and I just look at people come out and I'm like, I came from Bauchi, I came from Ben, I came from I did my album listening in Lagos recently and I didn't grow up in Lagos. I grew up in Potako. I, I moved here six years ago. And someone is coming from Edo State. I didn't oh, really. I don't know him. I've never met him. Whoa. And it's coming all the way, booking his trans flights, paying for hotels yeah, super fast. with like seven people, other people, and they're just there. They're like, oh yeah, we came here. They just randomly, when you're doing your thing, randomly tap you and be like, yo, bro, I came from a dude with my guys, came to support you, man, nice woman. And they were like, wow. So people can just be in a dude's state and think that, okay, I need to go and support that. This is album listening. Like, it's something that it means a lot. Yeah. This kind of support means a lot. And and you need more of it to keep going. Yeah, you heard it from Grandizzi. Um, but finally, let's do like a this and that session where you choose between the things I'm going to ask you. <laughs> so let's go, let's go. Um, So um, let's, let's talk about it. Touring or street rap or street performances? What do you prefer? Touring or street rap? I like both. As long as you have to... If I'm touring and performing, if I'm in the street and performing, I enjoy both of them. Mm. Both. So it's both right now? Both, fantastic. All right, let's go, let's go. And you how that MI or Lamidi. <laughs> <laughs> I can't choose between both of them. <laughs> you can't even They are both my goods, man. I used to, they, there was a point I used to date to MI every day. There was a point mm-hmm. when Olamide was every day too. Like, they've done so much for the culture, so it's both of them. I can't pick one or the other. Because, mm-hmm. like, they have, like, almost the same impact in the music, in the music scene. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mode 9 or Black Bones? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not even going to lie and say I'm, like, a deep hip-hop head like that. I, I, I listen to... I'm a Black Moons fan, genuinely. Yeah. I pick Black Moons. Big respect <laughs> to Modo. I pick Black Moons. Yeah, sure. So um, let's go with international Drake of Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> Drake. <laughs> Only <laughs> Drake. All right. Um, then finally, let's go back home and say that Green or Rugged Man. Uh, I didn't listen to a lot of Rugged Man, but I did come and grew up in the time when Black Green was popping. So, like, I'm not I'm not gonna say I've gone to listen to Rugged Man and collect his music a lot, but I listened to Dark Green pop up and yep. it was a time when I even used to use the beats to do covers. Like Dark Green was crazy when he popped. So mm-hmm. Dark Green for me, because I could I can relate to him more, no disrespect to Rugged Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so we heard it from you know my guy, that is he um it's an exciting edition actually. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for tuning in to Business Day. For more in-depth analysis, please read up on our website at www.businessday.ng. 